Hi there, welcome back to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. I am your host, Kathleen McGivern, and I am Ms. Artastic. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the best advice, ideas, and resources for new art teachers. So find the best advice, ideas, and resources for new art teachers um, and those who are in their first year as an art teacher um, or are becoming to one or looking to become an art teacher. So being an art teacher can sometimes present its own challenges or difficulties. So we're gonna be talking about just some advice for traversing this amazing journey of teaching art to kids. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MsArtastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MsArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MsArtastic.com now. So, I'm going to share some of my best advice for new art teachers. I know there is a lot in teaching from organizing to lesson planning, uh, classroom management to dealing with unexpected challenging behaviors uh, to dealing with the stress of time management and a small budget. All of which is huge on its own and it's just a start of what makes a teacher what makes being a teacher so challenging, right? And each is so big, it needs proper time. Um, Such as in a professional development course. So if you're looking for that kind of support, make sure that you look at www.artasticcollective.com forward slash art teacher academy to look for that in-depth level of professional development. So I'm going to share some of my top ideas of where to get started and share with you some of my art teacher resources and websites that can allow you to access um, farther support down the road as you go down this beautiful journey of being an amazing art teacher. Because that is what you are, right? You are amazing. You made this decision to show up and do this to inspire kids and then be be there for them every day and that is huge all right so tip number one is to observe other teachers teaching and pick their brains or get a mentor so I think that this is one of those things that got me through the early years of teaching the best thing that you can do is find an experienced teacher in your school and like latch on to them like a leech except without the gore right but be a parasite and absorb all that they know and do. They have already experienced the problem solving a lot and have basically problem solved a lot, right? So take the time to get to know your coworkers and ask them if you can pick the brain of someone whose teaching style is similar to yours, right? Like if they're not somebody who you see them yourself in, then I would not pick them, but if I would still observe everybody, honestly. But Find, especially if you can find someone who, whose teaching style kind of resonates with you as well. Now, I would also ask them if you can look at their binders and lesson plans and see if you can, uh, can copy just a lesson plan to use as an example to model your own off of. Ask them about how they observe student progress um, and measure that and how they assess. Um, ask them about their classroom management and how they foster classroom community. Ask them about their advice for you uh, in your own unique school community as they're all very different, right? And I would also ask if you could come in during one of your prep times or planning periods and observe them teach. This is such a valuable use of your time, right? Like watch how they instruct and model. Watch the pacing of their art lessons. Watch how they move through the room and support all their learners. Uh, Watch how they handle unexpected student behavior and their reactions when it happens. And then also watch how they distribute uh, materials and how they help kids. Watch their body language, their tone of voice. Just like watch and observe it all like a sponge and take note. 
Next is to inspire kids with choice-based learning. Uh, I strongly suggest that you take the time to find out what your students are interested in, right? You could walk around the room and talk with them and like find out what each of your grade groups is interested in. Write it down because then you can use this as a reference page uh, anytime that you need an idea for an art lesson. Not only are they helping you build a huge idea bank that you can choose from, but when you create lessons around the ideas that you are creating our lessons around, um, you if you're using these ideas, then you are essentially creating art lessons that are based around student interest and they're um, allowing themselves you're allowing them to see themselves in your classroom right it's becoming a student-centered classroom where their interests are at the forefront of your planning and that is a huge different maker difference maker right um, I know my previous episode um, I talked about um, like how artists get ideas and they like to an artist typically want to create based on things that they like, right? And now you're allowing for that to happen. So if you're wondering how to engage your learners and how to get them interested in your classroom and how to get them to actually want to do their best, this is a huge thing for that, right? Students with perhaps challenging or unexpected behaviors are going to respond to lessons that are of high interest. And for everyone else, again, who doesn't want to explore themes or topics that they like? right to be honest this will make things so much easier for both you and the students looking to make art with you and you guys can then both enjoy the process i wouldn't want to make art either that i didn't find interesting right like and think about like would you next you can grab my free art teacher focus guide um my free art teacher focus guide is a quick and easy guide to give you the seven areas of focus to give you a sense of where to start as a first year art teacher. It is full of good advice and tips and is of no cost to you. So I'd grab it for sure. And you can find that at www.artasticcollective.com forward slash focus. Uh, or find the link in the description of this podcast or on the podcast show notes. It's all everywhere, but essentially it's www.artasticcollective.com forward slash focus. Next is to visit the Ms. Artastic TPT store. So if you're looking for fully planned art resources in my store, you're going to find resources for teaching the elements of art, the principles of design, ceramics, artists, art history, and the holidays and seasons. So if you're wanting to make planning easier on yourself, this is the pro- this is probably the number one resource that you need to check out and save to your bookmarks. Bookmarks bar, my lovely friend. My entire days are like totally spent about, all I do is think about how I can serve our teachers better and meet their needs. Like no joke, that and making art and making art for kids. <laughs> That's all I do. And so I I share my decades of creation with my, with others in my TPT store and on my art curriculum called the Artastic Collective, specifically designed for art teachers. Okay, next is to plan around student interests. <laughs> it's my favorite. And to create relationships. So like I would take the time to get to know your students and again, survey them to find out their interests, right? Ask them what they're interested in and sit and talk and get to know them and record all the things they say, right? And again, you're going to use this as your brainstorm for later uh, when you're looking for ideas for our lessons, right? So not again, not only are they helping you with finding ideas for lesson planning, but then you're planning your lessons around their interests, right? And making them the center of all your planning and your classrooms and a student-centered classroom. Right, and in this way, you're making your classroom a place where your students can see themselves in it and you are fostering community. As well, I think it's important to take the the time to build relationships with your students, no matter how many there are and what they come with to your classroom. No matter how much unexpected behavior they may present, again, they're all kids, they all deserve the chances, um, they deserve all the chances to make mistakes right and have the opportunity to grow same as you uh that this being said the foundations of classroom management are around how well you have fostered community and relationships with your students this does not mean it solves the all the problems like some people kind of make out building relationships to be but it absolutely makes a difference you can get so much farther with students that 
you have taken the time to earn their trust with, right? Especially those challenging students. If you do not take the time to earn trust or build relationships, they are not going to want to learn from you or sit and get help from you, to be frank. It's a lot easier to support challenging students or, or students who automatically trust teachers or adults for that matter uh, and for their own personal reasons that you may not know. Um, if you have, but like if you have the key to the door, it's a lot easier to get in, right? Like imagine if you have to, if you're in the dark, you're on your porch or wherever, you're in a dark hallway trying to access your door to your house, wherever your door is. You're trying to get into a door, the lights are dim, it's hard to see, it's maybe dark out. Um, sometimes you have to dig all the way into the bottom of your bag to find your key ring. And then you're scrambling through all those keys, trying to find the one that fits. And then because it's dark, it's hard to see the lock and you're trying to open it. And you're just getting really frustrated because you forgot to turn on the lights before you left the house. And now it's dark and you're starting to panic and stress out um, because it's really hard to do that, right? Trying to get into your door in that situation and maybe you really have to use the washroom because you forgot to pee before you left and so now you're panicking <laughs> you're like oh my gosh i need this door open in 10 seconds or else it's going to be disasters i can no longer hold it i find myself in that situation a lot anyways um so but the other idea is that if you have a br brightly lit porch or foyer or wherever hallway and the key was just in your hands before you even went to the door right and if you know what key it is that opens that door it's a lot easier to get through the door frame and that is the point <laughs> okay uh enroll in our teacher cat arts teacher academy is the next tip so my next tip again is to enroll in art teacher academy so if you're looking for more in-depth art teacher training um, imagine having a program designed for our teachers to help you learn systems and proven strategies for lesson planning, classroom management, increased per student participation, engagement, and motivation, and developing the understanding um, of the importance of art education in your school community. With Art Teacher Academy, you will learn how to improve your teaching strategies in a predictable proven way, one that allows you to work smarter, not harder, by focusing primarily on continually improving five essential areas of your job, lesson planning, productivity and time management, classroom management, engagement strategies, and proactive approaches, and classroom communication. So you will receive lifetime access to my online course. It will provide you with a 12-week program that includes video lessons, and that provides provides strategies and systems that will help you plan, energize, manage, and organize and bring excitement into your classroom and art teaching career. You'll get a workbook to help you plan and grow as you work through the program. You're going to get all the templates to make everything easier and you're going to get 10 professional development hours and certificates um, that you can use if you need professional development hours. As well, you're going to get the Art Creation Toolkit, which is a special bonus that includes structured art lesson plan templates that have quick pick features to help you plan engaging art lessons faster. Uh, it will include some creativity challenges and choice-based art lessons and fully planned art projects, complete with step-by-step -step tutorials um, that have also their lesson plans, um, assessment, all that jazz done for you. That is an $80 value free with the course. So Art Teacher Academy is for anybody who is a art teacher, new art teacher, or is becoming an art teacher and wants to achieve confidence, focus, resolve, and art teacher excellence. It's for anybody who's been facing stress in the job and struggle in the classroom or for new art teachers and those in training that are feeling like lost, alone, without guidance of where to start, how to create highly engaging art lessons and structured lesson plans, and maybe they're needing some classroom management strategies or systems for organization and time management due to an unforgiving schedule and lack of time for planning and prep and ideas for energizing and motivating students to participate and to create their best work. So if you want to learn more about the course, please click the link in the podcast description or the podcast show notes or whatever you're viewing this on. Or you can go to www.arttasticcollective.com forward slash 
Art Teacher Academy. I'll say that again without the drama. www.arttasticcollective.com forward slash Art Teacher Academy. I had to think about it. <laughs> well, my friend, that is my best advice for new art teachers. It is always good to have some resources that you reference when you get stuck or are needing support. I offer, uh, again, a few ways to get this additional TLC, so make sure you check them out. Um, especially if you're feeling some of that overwhelm from starting an entire career as an art teacher from scratch. And again, nobody understands that feeling except for teachers, right? It's so overwhelming to go to work, to come home and prepare for work, to go back to work, prepare to teach that day, to then teach and do it all over again. Well, my friend, that is the end of this podcast episode. And I'll see you in the next. And this is Kathleen McGivern signing out. Well, that's it for this episode. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, Ms. Artastic. And if you create anything and share it online on social media, please, please, I would love to see it. So tag me at Ms. Artastic and I will check it out or join the community and conversation and use the hashtag, hashtag Ms. Artastic. And I will check it out that way as well. And you can see what other people are creating who create with Ms. Artastic YouTube videos. Well, that's it for this episode and I will see you in the next.